Hey, how's it going? Today we're going to be doing a quick beginner's guide to Reaver on the Dark Age of Camelot Eden private server. There will be six sections to this video, playstyle and role, specs for leveling and RVR, realm abilities, temps and important stats, recorder, and then just some quick tips. This is a beginner guide for folks who are just getting back to the game or want a refresher on how to play and is geared on getting you kickstarted into RVR. It is also mostly focused on solo duo gameplay as that is what I have the most experience with. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to ask in the comments or head over to the Eden Discord and ask in the class channels. Just make sure to check the pinned messages or use the search function first to make sure you're not asking some common questions. Reaver is a hybrid tank melee DPS class that is one of the best in the game at doing 1vx. It has high defensive stats along with easy access to life taps, ranged interrupts, and stuns while even having access to charge. Its hallmark skills are the auras, the PBAOE skills with certain debuffs and some direct damage. All of this put together makes it one of the best options for someone looking for a solo class. It shines in solo to small man and can even be effective in 8 mans. It's less sought after in 8s due to its tendency to break CCs with its auras and there being more focused classes. But with some practice, it can be a fantastic option for any scenario. It's so good that even my playing let me get the top weekly RPs and solo kill wings and flex them all over the place. Let's start with leveling specs. The first thing I'd like to point out is that the Eden devs have added a bit of a cheat sheet for leveling. If you talk to any Reaver trainer, they will give you a list of the top 5 most common specs for your level. But if you don't want to be running back and forth through those to see what others are choosing, you can just follow this guide. If you want to just stick with flex all the way, then all you have to do is spec weapon at level, soul rending after that, and then shield to the closest stun, and when you hit 42, pick up slam. If you like to be the most efficient in leveling, you're going to be changing what kind of weapon you're using a few times. You're going to start out with thrust and take that to level 10 for the anytime bleed. Thrust might not be worth doing since the tutorial is so short and will drop you off at level 10. After 10, you'll switch to slash for a stronger frontal bleed. At level 18, you'll switch to crush, which you'll stick with for a while. It has a good frontal bleed and anytime stun. Once you're level 34, you're going to switch to flex for the anytime DD style constrictor and then you can ride flex out till 50 and odds are you're going to be playing that for the rest of your reaver career. If you want and you're running with someone who will tank for you, you can instead switch to flex at 18 and use the side life tap for better damage. There are a couple level 50 specs that people go with. They're fairly alike, one being more solo oriented and the other more for groups. Both specs go 50 flex as that gives you the crazy strong back style called Leviathan as well as 42 shield for the slam 9 second stun. The main difference between the two is how much soul rending and parry you go for. The solo spec goes 36 soul rending and 20 parry, while the group spec goes 41 soul rending and 6 parry with a stronger life tap insta. Champion level abilities are also an important spec choice. Like with most classes, the first 5 points should go into the magic resist line. It's pretty much the catch all for everybody as it really boosts your defenses. After that, you can have some different decisions. You can either go for cast abilities like the debuff, the disease, and maybe a snare nuke, or you could go with insta self buffs like the AF line from the rogue trainer. Let's go over Reaver's realm ability choices. Reavers are pretty stacked when it comes to RAs. The higher rank they get, the closer they get to just being immortal. In Season 2, they even got the addition of Charge. Of course, you're going to want to start out with the usual and practically mandatory Longman 1 and Purge 2 combination. They allow you to sprint indefinitely with an Endurance Potion and get out of any debilitating effect such as debuffs, poison, and most importantly, CCs. After that, I'd highly suggest investing your points into Charge until you can get Charge 3. Charge is one of the most useful RAs in the game and can be essential to secure kills and live in 1vx scenarios. In between upgrades to Charge and after getting Charge 3, I'd suggest getting some of the defensive RAs like Mastery of Blocking and Parry. Keep in mind that while in PvP your block rate caps out at 50%, that is calculated after defense penetration. So when attacked by dual wielders, you gain a 25% reduction to your block and parry rate, a little bit of overcap can be useful. Another excellent realm ability to get is Ignore Pain or IP. This is just a huge heal that can keep you alive mid-combat. It's especially good because it isn't affected by disease. A solid rank 5 solo spec might look something like this. Longwind 1, Purge 2, Charge 3, IP 1, Mastery of Blocking 3, Mastery of Parry 3, and then Mastery of Pain 1. If you're going for more group or zerk oriented spec, then you might want a few different options. Rather than getting IP, I'd suggest getting Thornwheel Field or TWF. It is a large AoE field that deals a small amount of damage and snares all of the enemies within. This can be clutch, especially in zerg play, and get you a ton of tags. Instead of the extra defensive or offensive RAs, I'd try to aim for a high determination to make CC affect you as little as possible. Maybe even foregoing Purge 2 for higher determination in early ranks if you're only ever running in a large group. Debt 9 is pretty great, especially when you're playing on a Zerg. Let's talk temps. 
Reavers are a hybrid class and therefore are pretty tough to max out templates. Along with that, nearly all Reavers use Flex, which requires both Dex and Strength. The great thing about playing a Reaver is that there is already an excellent Reaver on the server that has worked out a lot of the kinks in min-maxing the class, called Rar Barbecue. They have a couple temps posted in the pins of the class Discord channel that will do the job for the vast majority of players. Dex and Strength are going to be your damage modifiers. They are essential and you should try to get them as high as possible. Quickness is needed for how fast you can swing. As mentioned before, it does cap at 250 total, which is a good point for the aim for. Con, as always, just increases your hit points. And while you can get Piety, it is definitely less essential. It does give you some extra power pull and a bit more damage on your instas, but it's pretty minimal. I'd say that the amount you get by accident from some good TOA bonus items are probably good enough. When it comes to your skill bonuses, you should absolutely max out flex, but the rest are less essential. Soul rending bonus is not very important, but parry and shield are great to have if you can fit it into your temp. It just tends to be a bit difficult to fit everything in. Again, pretty much every TOA bonus is useful for Reavers. Melee-wise, melee speed, damage, and style damage are essential. For more spell-focused TOAs, spell pierce is essential, as well as spell damage. It's also good to have plenty of AF and even healing bonus if you can make it work. There are quite a few solid items that should be in most Reaver temps. To start, there are two good options for chestplate. Timeless Indigo Mail and the Astral Hauberk of the Favored. Timeless Indigo gives a solid hot or heal over time and group heal, but has pretty rough stats. The Astral Chest, meanwhile, has a good instant omni heal as well as a group heal, but has excellent stats for Reaver. The main issue with going Timeless Indigo is that with how much defense Reaver has, it procs fairly rarely, and with its poor stat options, it makes it much harder to make a good temp. I'd also suggest using the Astral Leggings of Fortification, as it has good TOA stats and solid procs. Sabatons of Shard and the Male Sleeves of Eternal Retribution are also good items to keep in mind. One of the best reasons to go with these currency items rather than just crafted is that they can have two procs on them, rather than just the one that you get on crafting. There are two items that cover most of your spell-based TOA stats, Dragon's Eye Strand and the Zanzikar Remnant Cloak. This will max out your spell pierce, and the cloak gives you heal over time charge, which is mandatory for solo. When it comes to weapons, you have a good few choices. The max damage that you can put out most of the time would be having a Celerity Rog and switching into a 4.2 speed Spirit Legendary. You want to have the slowest weapon speed while slinging at a 1.5 speed. There is one weapon choice that you can buy with currency that gives Celerity, and that's the Warlord's Golden Flail. The only issue with it is that it has a 4.2 swing speed, making it take longer to get that Celerity proc. There's also the Astral Divine Light weapon. It has great stats and some good procs. One is an Omni Heal and the other is a Spread Heal, which means it heals the members of your group with the lowest health. Lastly, the Dark Knight's Fury is a good choice. It gives a weapon skill buff and also has an Omni Drain. Technically, getting the weapon skill buff, then Celerity, into a 4.2 Legendary is the max damage possible, but getting that many procs is going to be pretty rare. The last important thing to consider when getting geared up are Chargers. There are four Chargers that I consider the best to have. The first is the Heal Over Time Cloak. It's incredibly strong in all 1vx scenarios and can make or break a fight. After that, there's the stat buff charges that I'd recommend. All of these can be used from your inventory, so it isn't necessary to build them into your temp. I'd suggest having Dex Quick, Strength Con, and Spec AF. This will help you get max swing speed and damage along with making you tankier. It also doesn't have any charges that give you long cooldowns, allowing you to make use of reactive charges like the Hot. If you want to get the most out of your charges, you'll want to have some buff bonus and spell duration swap items. They're fairly easy to get nowadays as ROGs, and you can search for them using the item database filters. If you don't want to get those, then you can instead pick up the Metherian of Endless Demand. This will max out your buff bonus and spell duration for the cost of having a heavy debuff applied to you while you have it on, and for 15 seconds after taking it off. This debuff does practically make you a free kill though. Let's quickly go over the recorders that I have set up on my Reaver. The first is to have the parry chain backed up by any time. Next I would have the back style Leviathan and any time. I would also have the side chain life tap in any time, which is essential. I also have the heal button that has all my potions, hot and ignore pain on it. I make sure to have this with the non-combat potions first so that I don't waste my more expensive instant potions when I don't have to. The last recorder I have is just a CL buff button. Now let's just go over some of the quick tips for playing Reaver. Charge is essential to Reaver now. It can be used to catch up to hunters and archers, or to finish off an opponent that would otherwise be able to CC you. Try to take note of what kind of CCs your enemies have. If the only possible CC is a stun, like with a melee opponent, and you're already immune to it, then save your charge till that immunity is up, otherwise it's just a waste of the RA. Sounds simple, but you'd be surprised how often I see people use charge while still within my slam immunity timer. Speaking of slam immunity timer, it's important to keep track of how long until you can slam your opponents again. It's 45 seconds. 
if you check your clock when you hit your opponent, you can at least get a rough timing on it. While your opponent is immune to slam, pin is great. It's an anytime snare, so if you have an opponent who you need to get away from, use pin. You can even just pin kite while waiting for your slam timer to come back up in one v ones Space out your instas and don't just use them for damage. Often, I see people use their instas immediately for an extra bit of damage. You should instead save them for after your health is down a bit to take advantage of the life tap, as well as to keep them ready for interrupts. With the three instas that Reaver has, you can keep most people interrupted until you can reach them. It makes you an incredibly difficult opponent for archers when combined with engage and charge. If you don't know what engage does, it gives you an incredibly high block rate in exchange for not attacking. Use this when you're popped by archers, especially when your interrupts are down. Keep in mind that their dot arrows can still get through your block, so you aren't immune to damage, and that there is a timer where you can't use it after an opponent has been attacked. My last tip for you is that you can usually get one attack off within a numb. I suggest using numb to maybe beta purge out as it has a real short immunity timer, and if they don't purge it, then use python to get off that strength debuff as it reduces their strength by a whole 30 points. And that's all I have for you. If it helped out any, I like would be great. I also want to put out a guide on any of the classes that I've played, so if you want to see those, you can drop a sub. Uh, anyway, I hope this helped, and I'll see you out in the frontiers.